Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Lehman from Math with Mrs. Lehman, and today we're going to talk about review session number three. Uh, we're going to do a few questions here to get us ready for the state test coming up in a month. And these were questions, again, released, on, or released from the 2018 um, New York State Math Assessment for grade six. So the first question here says, mark graph points on the coordinate plane below to represent locations of a school and a bank. So you can see that. And it says, Mark wants to add the location of the library on the coordinate plane. The distance from the library to the school is the same as the distance from the bank to the school. So we know the school to the bank is one. Let me undo that, put it on the marker. It is one, two, three, four units, right? And we're counting by ones based on the scale here. So we know that's four apart and it says, the distance from the library to the school is the same as from the bank to the school. So it's got to be four away from the school. So what we need to do is figure out where it could be. So if we go four jumps up from the school, it could be there, right? But it could be four jumps down, or it could actually be four jumps west. So one, two, three, four right here, all right, which would be at... Um, negative 2, 4, all right, so it could be any of those. It says which ordered pair could be the coordinates of the library. So right here we've got um, 2, 8 because we're going over 2, up 8. In this case down here we have 2, 0. So let's see if we can find any of those in our choices, all right, so 2, 4, 2, 4 is the location of the school, so that's for someone who didn't read carefully. Choice B, 2, 8 would be one of our, one of our possible locations. So the answer is choice B. Choice C, 4, 4 would be for halfway between the school and bank, because that would be right here, but that's not what we're looking for. And then 6, 8 would be the location if you went 4 above the bank, right? Because if we went 4 above the bank, you'd end up right there. But that's not what you are looking for. You're looking for something that's the same distance from the library, or the library to the school, which is the same as the school to the bank. All right, so that's really just reading carefully. You're looking for something that's 4 away from the school. All right, so let's go ahead and do this next question, which involves surface area. If I can get to it. It says, a student draws the net below to show the dimensions of a container that is shaped like a rectangular prism. So dimensions mean, means the measurements of a, of a shape. So we talked about that in class. Um, measurements mean, and dimensions mean the same thing. So a lot of kids get hung up on that word, and it just means what does it measure? Um, okay, so a rectangular prism means that if you were to fold this up, it'd look like a box, okay? It'd be a, a closed-in box, um, a rectangle in 3D. So what you need to do for this is you have to find the area of each of these rectangles on here and add them all together. So we'd find the area of this one, which would also be the same as this one, all right? Because when you fold that up, that uh, rectangle one would be the back, of the shape. Rectangle two would be the front of that shape. Um, rectangle three, we'll say, that would be the bottom. And the top would be the same size, right? And then you've got the side. The left side would be the same as the right side. So that's essentially what we're going to do. So for rectangle one, we have to identify, first of all, that it's um, base times height, or in the case of a rectangle, length times width. So area equals base times height, so 5 times 2. We know that area equals 10 um, inches squared. Okay, so we know this is 10 inches squared, and we know 2 would be the same thing. So area of rectangle 2, area equals 10 inches squared. All right, let's find the area of rectangle number 3. So again, area equals base times height. And in this case, this would be 5, right? And this would be 5. This would be 3. So we would have 5 times 3, which is 15. Oh, and this is where the smart board stops working. 
All right, so 15 inches squared for rectangle three, which would be the same for rectangle four. So 15 inches squared, 15 inches squared. So I'm gonna write that down over here. Area of rectangle four is that. All right, so we just have to do five and six. So five, again, we've got another rectangle. Area equals base times height. The base is two, the height is three. So you can see right here, base and height, that is six inches squared. So what we need to do for number six, or rectangle number six, same exact thing, six inches squared. So to find the total surface area, that means, um, well actually let's read the question. It says, what is the surface area? That means the area of all of the faces. All right, so each of these rectangles are a face of this shape, and it says um, in square inches of the container. So we need to take all of these areas and just add them together. So we have 10 plus 10, which equals 20, right? Then we've got 15, which is 35, plus another 15, which is going to give us 50. Then we've got um, the 6. And then another six. So this is a 62 square inch um, surface area. Okay, so that's choice D. A lot of times they'll try to, you know, trick you guys and say maybe that you need to find the volume or something of that nature. They've got it, so you could probably get the perimeter. Um, but surface area means finding how much area is in that entire shape. Okay, so, um, and luckily they gave this to us as a net. Anyway, um, so just two quick questions today. My challenge to anyone watching that's in my class, please define or write down on a piece of paper what is a coefficient. And when you um, hand me in that paper with the correct answer, I will put your name into a drawing for bonus points and or prizes. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. And